Alhamdulillah, Allah Almighty has granted me and you the tawfiq to come to the masjid, to come together to remember the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the awliya Allah, those who have spent their life in serving and those who have spent their life in seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Quran al kareem many verses recall back to how much emphasis has been put on in terms of the friends of Allah Almighty and the most common ayat you hear is Allah inna awliya Allahi la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun There's many who are sitting here and they'll know in terms of the awliya Allah, Allah states that they have no fear and nothing to worry about They have no fear and they don't worry about much The friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one of the best attributes and one attribute which we can relate to. I'll explain exactly why we do our Yarmi Sharif and in terms of our gatherings every month and what connection and nisbat it has. But the, one of the greatest characteristics of the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is which is why they don't fear, is because they keep the dunya out of their heart. You see, when you, in the dunya, most of our problems are all based upon the dunya. All of our mind, our concentration, all of our worries are worries of the dunya. And something, this is something that they had given up with. Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an was told, is reported that he used to sit there, put his hand through his beard and say, he said three times that I've divorced you, I've divorced you. What was he talking about? He was talking about the dunya. Why? Because he never wanted to install the love of the dunya in his heart. The friends of Allah Almighty, they don't worry. Why? Because first and foremost, their connection with Allah Almighty is the best of the best. And how deep is their connection? Whenever they call upon Allah Almighty, Allah Almighty also responds. The person of Allah, friend of Allah, when he calls upon Allah Almighty, one of the greatest stories, and first and foremost, I mentioned in regards to the awliya Allah, why their status is so high is because the amount of work they did for religion, for Islam. What they did within the gathering, Skari Sahib mentioned that there was non-Muslims there and there was just not Muslims, there was Hindus and every you know, different religion, people from different walks of life. What they did was by them speaking and by them lecturing and by them bringing everybody together, there were thousands and thousands of people who reverted back to Islam. Which should be our goal too, which should be our purpose. Why us as individuals, we all, all of you, not just me or Kari Islam or somebody with a beard or somebody with a topi, no. Everyone who is a Muslim, the moment you step outside, you automatically represent what? You represent what? You tell me. When you step outside, what do you represent? Islam. You represent your religion. You're an ambassador of your religion. You see when you walk around with a United top on or an Arsenal top on, example, people know straight away. Yeah, he's a, He supports that team, he's, he's vouching for that team, he, ha, he knows about that team. You know, that's his interest. Whereas us, our character, especially outside in the dunya, around the non-Muslims, should represent our religion well. How you carry yourself, how you speak to other people. Yeah, how you speak to other people how you deal with other people in terms of in school, whether it be with your teachers, whatever, whatever walk of life it may be. This is one of the biggest factors within our religion. Why? Because our Prophet Muhammad them, tells us about how, you sh how your character and how you should be a soft individual. So you can approach people and people can approach you. Okay, and our love and muhabba and this but why we have with the awliya Allah is why? Because stated the, uh, the hadith of Mubarak mentions that you are raised with whom you love. So if you have love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Ahlul Bayt, the Sahaba Kiram, and the Awliya Allah, then you'll be raised with whom? These people. If you have love for the dunya and the people of the dunya, then you'll be raised with them. But in regards to the methods and the gatherings, why? Because these are people who are successful in the dunya. The Awliya Allah are the ones who took religion and then passed it down to us. It's like a rope. Right at the top, you know, there's people of high caliber, people of knowledge, and they pass it down to people like me and you. How, how would Islam get to us today if it wasn't for the scholars, if it wasn't for the awliya Allah, 
How would we know about Islam? How would we know about how to perform Salah? How would we know about the Sunnah of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? If it wasn't noted, if it wasn't taught to one, then another, then another. And this is something that we call in our, in terms of the, the umbrella term is Nisbet. Nisbet is a term which you've heard. Anybody heard of this term before? Nisbet? What is Nisbet exactly? Nisbet is the best example. I've given it many times, but I'll go over it again. Just so you understand. A blank piece of paper has no value. Yes? A blank piece of paper has no value. You can throw it in the bin, you can throw it on the road, do whatever you like with it. The moment you put on that piece of paper, Alif, La, Me, Thalik, Al, Kitab, La, Reba, Fi. What, how will you, and what will you do with that paper? Will you throw it in the bin? No. Will you throw it on the road? No. Why? Because now it's attached to the Quran and Kareem. Where do you put it? The highest place, on the shelf, on the bench, wherever it may be. Why? Because that paper no longer is just a paper. It's a paper which has the Quran and Kareem on it. It's got an attachment. It's linked to someone. It's linked to something, okay, which is, has value, which is why we believe in Nisbah. And one of the biggest stories in regards to Nisbah is um, Surah Kahf, which we recite. We should recite on a weekly basis. This is a learning point for all of you guys here. Surah Kahf, you should recite from Friday to Friday. The blessing is immense. And uh, Allah Almighty showers His nur and barakah upon you from Friday to Friday. But one of the stories in Surah Al Kahf mentions that the, the people of the cave, and along with the people of the cave was. Anybody know the story? This is in regards to Nisbah. There was a dog who used to sit outside. A dog who used to sit outside. Now he's got Nisbah with the people of the cave, he's got connection with the people of the cave, and Allah Almighty gave him a rank and status also. It's all about the nisbat and the connection. In terms of, you don't have to, the problem today is we put our gatherings, they could be no matter what we call them, whether we call them milad, or whether we call it teachings of the seed of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's the same thing. There's, in terms of if we call it Yarmi Sharif, Barmi Sharif, or if you call it remembering the friends of Allah Almighty. It's the same thing. We cause division based upon titles and names. We cause division based upon if that is correct or remembering these people is correct. What people may do today in terms of in subcontinental countries in, in, in Asia, wherever, wherever else, what is right and wrong, that is a different topic. Okay, but the teachings of these people, these people who converted from not just a thousand, two thousand, up to ninety thousand people at once, their teachings were correct. Okay, we know how much blessings you get and reward you get if you turn one person towards Islam, let alone 90,000. Ultimately, all of these awliya Allah follow whom? Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa They follow their teachings and their sunnah from the Quran also. And if you go today to their mizar, if you go today to where they are, their resting place, okay, you're going to see thousands and thousands of people busy. Okay, go to a local Qabristan somewhere. I'm giving you an example why Allah has given them izza and respect when they were alive and also when they have left the dunya. When they were alive, they were respected. Why? Because these are the friends of Allah Almighty. Allah Almighty gives them respect when they're alive and also when they pass. Okay, so you go to their mizan where they're resting places and you'll see thousands and thousands of people. Go to any other Qabristan. Maybe on Eid it'll be busy, certain days it'll be busy. Okay, so it's all about how much work you do for deen and how much Allah will bless you in this dunya and the akhirah. So the teachings of this mehfil and these gatherings is great. You can learn so much, so much from the great individuals you see in today, in this day and age, and I'll leave you with this point. Whether it be a sport, a skill, whether it be work, dunya, whatever it may be, Normally, we always look at the guy at the top. How did he become the CEO? How did he become an owner of something? How did he become so good at something? And then you follow his path. If he used to put five hours of practice a day, you put in five hours of practice a day. Example. These examples have been put into place for us. It's for us to learn how they live their lives so we can follow their path. It's simple teachings. And it's more relatable. Why? Because they were just like me and you on this video. Understand? 
you can't say to you, you can't compare yourself to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Example, you can take his teachings. <laughs> his life, blessed life was completely different to me and you. But the people, the awliya Allah, the friends of Allah Almighty, we can relate to more. So may Allah Almighty guide us and keep us upon the Surah Al-Mustaqeem and allow us to learn from the awliya Allah. May Allah Almighty allow us to attend the masajid and become good ambassadors of our religion. Ameen. Alhamdulillah.